Welcome to this real Python course, Python's Mutable versus Immutable Types. My name is Stephen, and I'll be guiding you through this topic over the coming lessons. Perhaps you've heard the terms mutable and immutable already, or maybe it's the first time you're coming across these words. Either way, understanding the difference between mutable and immutable types and how to use these data types is an important part of Python programming. In fact, it's an important part of programming in any language, because these are concepts that are common in other languages as well. For example, when you first learned about tuples, have you ever asked yourself why you need tuples in Python when they're so similar to lists? Here you can see a list called team with a number of names and then a tuple called team. And you can treat lists and tuples in similar ways, not identical, but similar ways. So can't you use lists every time? And should you use lists every time? And the answer is no. And in this course, we'll see why sometimes you need to use tuples and your program requires you to use tuples. And when you've compared string and list methods, you may have noticed some difference in their behavior. For example, if you have the same list team as before, and then you append a new team member, let's say Trevor has joined the team, and you say team.append parentheses, speech marks, Trevor. The list team has changed. Trevor is added to the list. But then you try something similar with the string greeting. In this case, it's a string that says, hello, Pythonistas. You then call greeting.upper. Notice the pattern. In the first example, you called team.append. In this case, it's greeting.upper. It follows the same pattern. However, the variable greeting did not change. Even though greeting.upper shows us the string in uppercase, it's actually showing us a copy of the string, the string itself has not changed. And you might think, why do these two methods, I'm using them in the same way, why do they behave in a different way? One of them changes team, team.append, the other one does not change greeting, greeting.upper. The reason is mutability and immutability. And at the end of this course, you'll understand why these methods work in the way they do. So before we get started, here's what you can expect from this course. You'll understand the difference between mutability and immutability. You'll explore mutable and immutable built-in data types. Python has several built-in data types. Some of them are mutable, some of them are immutable. And we'll see which ones are which and why they behave in the way they do. And you'll also identify and, importantly, avoid some common gotchas you get when dealing with mutability. Let's get started. So an important first step is to understand the difference between these two words, mutable and immutable. You can launch Python and we can use the same list team that has Jason, Matt, Sarah, Caitlin and Mark or whoever you want to put in it. Now, a list in Python is mutable. What does this mean? This means that if I want to change one member of the team, for example, I want to say team square brackets one, which gives me Matt. I want, however, this to be Trevor. So there's been a change. Matt has left the team for some reason and Trevor has joined. And this is perfectly fine. You can see that now the same list has Jason, Trevor in second place, and then Sarah, Caitlin and Mark in exactly the same place. However, if team was a tuple, in this case, the same names, but this is a tuple. A reminder that the parentheses are not needed to create a tuple. I'm using them here to make it clear that this is a tuple, but you could simply put the strings with commas. It's the commas that make a tuple. If I try to change the second item in team, which is now a tuple, I want to remove Matt and put Trevor, I get a type error. Python tells me that a tuple object does not support item assignment, which means I cannot take an existing element in the tuple and replace it with something else. And this is the key difference between a tuple and a list. A tuple is immutable. Once you create the tuple, you cannot change any of its elements. You cannot add elements, you cannot remove elements, you cannot replace any of them. With a list, however, which is immutable, you can make any change you want. So let's recreate team as a list to so make sure it's the one with the square brackets. And you can, for example, add a new member to the team by using append. Let's say Kate has joined the team. And this is perfectly fine because a list is mutable. Therefore, I can add new values to it. 
I can also remove an element. For example, if I want to remove Jason, who's left the team, that is also possible. I cannot do any of these operations with a tuple, because with a tuple, once you create the tuple, you cannot make any changes to it. So here's a quick summary of this lesson. You can change the contents of a mutable object, such as a list. In this case, there's a team, and we're replacing Matt with Trevor. However, you can't make changes to the contents of an immutable object, such as a tuple. In this case, you try to remove Matt and replace him with Trevor, and you get a type error. Another very common built-in immutable type in Python is the string. Let's create a string, for example, greeting equals hello, Pythonistas. And you can confirm that greeting the string is immutable by changing, for example, let's try to change the last character. Let's say that you don't like the exclamation mark, you want to change it with a period or full stop. And if you try to do that, you get a similar error to the one we got in the previous lesson when we tried to make a change to a tuple. The type error says string object does not support item assignment. So same issue, we cannot change any value in a string. Why? Because a string is immutable. Once you've created a string, you cannot change it. Now, you might say, well, but is that really true? For example, can't I do, you might be asking, something like this, greeting equals hello. You hit enter, no errors. And if I find out what greeting is, it is indeed the new string. So you might be wondering, does that mean that strings can change? And the answer is no, they can't. And what's happening here is something that's key to understand in Python. There's a difference between the object and its name, which we often call the variable. There are two string objects that you're creating here, hello Pythonistas and hello. When you create hello Pythonistas initially, you assign it to the variable name greeting. However, when you reassign greeting to hello, that's a new string you're not changing the original object. The original string remains the same. It's immutable, so you cannot change it. Instead, you create a brand new object, the new string hello, and you reassign that to the same variable name. So from this point onwards, the variable name greeting no longer points to the original object, it points to the new object. But importantly, the object itself has not changed strings cannot change because they're immutable. You can confirm this. Let's go back to greeting equals hello Pythonistas. And you can find the identity of greeting. The built-in ID function finds the identity of an object, not of the name greeting, but of the object that this name is pointing to. So in this case, the string object hello Pythonistas has a certain identity you'll get a different number when you try it out. In fact, you'll get a different number every time you try it out. It doesn't matter what this number is. In CPython, which is the most common interpreter in Python, this refers to the memory location. What matters is that this number is unique to every object. This object is the only object that can have this number for the duration of my program. So let's try to reassign greeting to hello and find the identity of greeting again. It's the same variable name, but it's not the same object. The identity is different. You can see that this number ends in 0 to 4, whereas the previous string object, hello Pythonistas, ends in 5, 3, 6. This shows us that even though the variable name is the same, the object is different. You are replacing a string object with another one. This difference between the variable name and the object is a really important one in Python. So let's summarize it. A Python variable name is a label. It refers to a memory location on your computer where objects live. The Python object is the concrete piece of information, and that's what lives in a specific memory location on your computer. In Python, everything is an object. You may have heard this phrase many times before. And every object has three core characteristics. Let's have a look at what they are. There's the value. 
This is if you have an integer, five, five is its value. Or in the example we've seen in this lesson, you had the string, hello, Pythonistas, or just hello. That's the value of the object. Every object has an identity. In this lesson, you've also seen one way of looking at this identity using the built-in ID function, which gives you a number. It's like the address of where this object exists. And every object has a unique identity. So no two objects can have the same identity. They cannot have the same number. And finally, the type. The string object is a string. An integer object is an integer. This is an important aspect of an object. The type determines how we can use an object, whether it's mutable or immutable, and other characteristics that are specific to different data types.